Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is I want to look at a rotation matrix. So I'm going to assume here that we either have a vector or a point, and that point is described in terms of some coordinate system here, which I have shown, x, uh, x and y. This could be a global coordinate system for imagine if you're designing a video game where there are multiple coordinate systems, maybe a global one and a lot of local coordinate systems. Um, and they might not be parallel to each other. Some may be rotated uh, relative to each other. So imagine we have this vector here, this green vector. It has a certain magnitude, and it has components AX and AY in the global coordinate system. And what if I have another coordinate system and I want to rotate it, for example, right? Um, it might look something like this. So I have a prime coordinate system drawn in red, right? So I'm showing you the same vector now. It has components uh, BX prime and BY prime in a different coordinate system. So what I want to do today is I want to look at how do I transform um, my coordinates AX and AY into the new coordinate system that is rotated by some angle theta relative to the first one. All right, we're going to go through kind of the simple proof of this. Now notice I'm not rotating the vector. The vector hasn't changed or the point in space hasn't changed. I'm only rotating the coordinate system in this case. So be a little bit careful. Um, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here's the setup. We have our global coordinate system with its two components, and we have our rotated coordinate system in red with its two components. Now, I'm gonna show you at least the easiest way to prove this, in my opinion, uh, is to do it like this. So we notice we have our components here in red. We have BX prime and BY prime. In order to prove this, I think the best way to do it is to do it this way. So first, we're gonna uh, move one line over. I just wanna add some extra lines because we're gonna have to link all of these components together, and I just wanna make the diagram as clear as possible. So I make that line and I move it over and the total length of this line has to be BX prime, right? It's the same as over here. Now the other thing I want to do now is just extend this line a little bit, okay? And the total length of that line we're going to be able to find because it's going to be the total length of the line here on the left hand side. Now I want to notice a couple things about this uh, diagram. There are a lot of triangles here so let's just keep in mind a couple things. The value AX is this one right here. This is AX, right? It's the same as down here, okay? That has to be AX. Let's get rid of that. And the AY length has to be this one. AY is this length right here, right? Measured on the global coordinate system Y axis. So keep that in mind. Now, we're gonna define some distances here. Now, again, if this is the angle theta, you should be able to convince yourself that this here is also the angle theta. All right, now we're going to define some terms right here. Uh, first term we're going to define is, again, I'm gonna also write the angle theta down over here. All right, so let's go ahead and do some things. So we have AX is the hypotenuse distance. That means that this distance right here, this here must be AX cos of the angle theta. Okay. Uh, this side right here would then mean that this here is AX sine of the angle theta. Okay, we have a few more to do. Let's go on this side. Remember, this whole length is AY. That means that this total length uh, must be AY cos of the angle theta, which would mean that um, this little bit right here must be AY sine of the angle theta. All right, so if you can get to this point, you're pretty much done the problem, okay? Okay, so now we can start writing things out. So we're gonna write down our x component, bx prime. bx prime is this total length right here, right, which I've repeated at the top of that rectangle, right? That is the total length. And you can see now you can write it in terms of the a components. So bx prime, you should be able to write as a y sine of the angle theta plus a x cos of the angle theta. All right, what about b y prime? b y prime is a little bit more difficult. b y prime is small right here, right? It's only this one. But again, you should be able to write it as the total distance here minus this other section over here. So make sure you understand this. So this is a y cos of the angle theta and then minus. AX sine of the angle theta. 
All right, so what we're gonna do now is simply just rearrange terms and then we'll write it in matrix form. To rearrange terms, I'm just gonna put the X components first. So we're going to have uh, cos of the angle theta multiplied by AX, I just swapped the order here, plus sine of the angle theta multiplied by AY. And for the prime term, again, I'm gonna put the X component first. I have a negative sign for the sine theta term, AX and then plus cos of the angle theta multiplied by AY. Now you can see right away, you can write this in uh, matrix and vector form, All right? These are the components of my B vector, and then I can introduce a rotation matrix, and that gets multiplied by the components of the global coordinate system, AX and AY. All right, if I have a look at the two equations I have here, you can, should be able to write this as cos of the angle theta, sine of the angle theta, minus sine, and then cos of the angle theta. Okay, so at the end, you can write down that this vector could be equal to this rotation matrix multiplied by the vector A. Okay, and my rotation matrix uh, for this problem is simply this guy. Okay, so that is how you can rotate uh, one set of coordinates relative to another, okay? Uh, just using this simple proof. All right, one thing I always do after getting a result is check it using some very, very simple cases. So here we have our global coordinate system, and I'm gonna take a very simple vector that simply lies along the x-axis here. It has a magnitude of five. All right, what if I rotated now a coordinate system by an angle equal to 90 degrees? So again, the rotation here would be counterclockwise, and this angle would be 90 degrees. What if I wanted to describe the same vector now in terms of the local coordinate system? Again, I would simply have BX to supply my rotation matrix. And this thing, it's cos of 90 degrees. What else? Sine of 90 minus sine of 90 and cos of 90 degrees, multiplied by the components in the global coordinate system, five and zero. Let's first simplify this uh, rotation matrix. Uh, so what do we have? Cos of 90 is zero, sine of 90 is one, uh, minus one and a zero. These are the components. So at the end, the last step here, you simply do the uh, vector matrix multiplication. I'll just do it down here. So my components, uh, first one is zero, and the second one would be minus five. All right, let's go see if that makes sense. Yeah, look at there is no component along the x prime axis, right? That's this guy. And there is a component along the y prime axis, which would be equal to negative five. Okay, so anyway, it checks out for uh, this simple case. Uh, you could do any angle, it doesn't matter. Uh, I've tested out for the simple case. You try it out for another angle, 30, 60, 45 degrees. It really doesn't matter. Um, the transformation is general. Okay, thanks for watching, folks. Hopefully you learned something in this video.